<laughs> Hello. Uh, in the Are almost you? flesh. Close, right? <laughs> Closest we've come in uh, in a little while. In quite quite some time. That is that is very true. We have so much to talk about. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Stacy Tiro, and this is Changed for the Better, The Power of Arts in Education. I'm Stacy Tiro, a high school performing arts teacher for over 25 years. I've taught a lot of amazing people. Now that so many of my students are adults, they'll teach me how, through the lessons in my classroom, they have been changed for the better. Today, we are going back to the 20th century. <laughs> um, so the person that is in front of me with all that stuff behind him, which we're going to talk about that in a little bit, a Google search of this man's name oh, will no. come up with the, ti the, the title of American Painter. And it could, could not be closer to the truth. And uh, so, you know, he's got, he's got some heft behind him. He'll, he would never like admit that, but he's got some heft behind him. Uh, and I get to say, I knew him when. <laughs> you so still know me. <laughs> I do, I do, it's very nice. Um, so back in high school, this guy was my lighting guru, my lighting God. <laughs> And this was before the digital light board, you know, innovation, before they were a thing, when the controls were this massive, noisy behemoth of a beast that took up an entire wall and had these like squeaky levers that like every time he would, he would make them go, it was like, like in the middle of a scene. Yeah. And um, I think I think I may have had a notion that he like could draw or like that he had some some sort of artistic talent, but that's not that's not how I knew him. He was like my go to tech lord, like up in the booth in the back, you know, kind of hidden behind that little glass wall. <laughs> and whenever I needed a light on the stage, he'd make that happen. And I'd like scream his name <laughs> from like across the entire auditorium which probably scared the bejesus out of him because we didn't have walkie talkies, <laughs> you know, no cell phones, nothing, nothing like that. This was the 20th century, not the 21st century. Um, Cause I can scream really loud whenever I need to. Um, but he was always so, so good natured and he really just seemed to love, you know, the job, like doing, doing that work. After high school, I didn't hear a lot about him or from him until sometime after he graduated from the School of Visual Arts in New York. And as his career advanced, and I'm gonna let him talk about what that is, although you might look behind him and get a sense, um, his inordinate talent became evident to the world. And his, his niche, his, his genre of art started to get a lot of attention. Um, he was featured all over like big time media, not just like, you know, the Gannett Journal News, but like New York Times, Yes Network, the Wall Street Journal, the Sporting News, and, and many, many more. I mean, like the list goes on and on. Uh, and his, his website features headline after headline that highlights not only like his talent, but also his insane love for the game of baseball. And so I don't remember exactly at what point we connected, like what year it was, but there were like periodic dinners that we'd have with this like small crew of other 20th century graduates <laughs> at random restaurants in, in the area, in the local area, while he was still living locally at, at home. But then this guy decided to move to Brooklyn and he got married and he had two kids and he created this explosive art career um, that has been incredible, an incredible trajectory. Uh, but my love for this guy has never faltered. And today he is gracing us 
with his wisdom, his humor, and his very, very kind soul. He is, at least in my eyes, a celebrity. <laughs> and I am truly, truly honored to have him sitting here in front of me um, talking on this podcast. So this is really, it's really a treat for me. Aww. So we're going to like get right into this. And so you're going to tell everybody your name, the 20th century year you graduated. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit more about what you do now. Okay. Well, I mean, before I do that, I, I mean, I have to thank you for such a lovely uh, introduction. I don't know if, uh, if I've ever sounded so good on paper. Uh, reality is much, uh, much less interesting. Um, but that was very nice of you to say. <laughs> and it's, it, as always, it is great to see you. Um, Anyway, uh, I'm Greg, uh, Greg Kreinler, um, and uh, I graduated uh, Spring Valley High School in 1998, which, uh, yeah, looking back on uh, is a long time ago. Um, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that, that fact was was further cemented uh, earlier today when I got a haircut and most of the hair that was on the floor was gray. <laughs> um, not a fan, but uh, yeah, there I am. Yeah. <laughs> no, you see, but it, it looks great on you, but I'm like, whatever, it's, I just, I'm not used to it because I'm still, I think I've mentioned this to you, you know, off mic, you know, in person tons of times that uh right now I'm 42 years old and I'm still like you know the the frightened 15 year old kid inside it's still that's still very much there which is you know partially the reason that I'm so excited to chat with you today <laughs> <laughs> I know every um, time I I send everybody like these questions just in preparation so that they know like what it is that that they're um sort of getting themselves into and it's always just like this like psychological <laughs> deep dive <laughs> into a really tough part of their existences that sometimes, you know, you, you want to put it away and just leave it away. But um, <laughs> I'm here to bring it all back. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a bad thing because that, I mean, that stuff is still very much a part of who I am. It's not necessarily uh, on the surface, but uh, you know, I, I've, I've really been lucky in that I guess people are kind of interested in what I do and when they want to talk to me, it's kind of like my story, uh, it kind of gets interesting or, or begins more so on the artistic front after high school. So I don't really get into that part of my life so much. So that, you know, that part of it is, is very appealing. <laughs> and, you Yay. know, I'm talking with a good friend who, you yeah. know, I can have these fun stories with and, and, and reminiscing about old times. And uh, yeah, it's uh it's different. It's kind of like, it's kind of using different muscles. So yeah. And you've, and you've done a lot of like podcasts and interviews over the course of your career so far. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. that sounds really weird to say uh, my career. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I guess, you know, whether, whether I'm talking to, uh, uh, you know, uh, someone doing a, a blog or a podcast or you know something for a paper or whatever you know however uh i've managed to kind of slime my way into these people's thoughts they you know it's always it always starts with the art it doesn't kind of uh it doesn't really focus on kind of how neurotic well i guess it does focus on how neurotic i am but <laughs> it, it doesn't focus on like the genesis of that neurotic yeah. neurosis. it's a very specific neuroses <laughs> right 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 <laughs> Yeah, you know, being, uh, you know, being like a, the Northeastern, you know, Jewish neurotic guy, it's, we have a type, as you know. Uh, yeah, so uh, 1998, I uh, graduated. Uh, I, uh, I'm an artist. I uh, do that full time. Uh, I paint uh, specifically kind of historical uh, scenes in baseball history. Uh, you know, a uh, 
certain players, certain moments, uh, ballparks that kind of focus on every single era there's been kind of in the in the history of the sport. And I've been really lucky in that I've been able to make, you know, a career out of it. And I've been doing that uh, full time for 15 years now, which is frightening and amazing. amazing. It's amazing. Uh, well, it's it, I appreciate that, but it's it's also like I'm still, I'm waiting. I know I've mentioned this to you before, but I'm, I'm still waiting for somebody to kind of knock on the door, you know, with their clipboard, you know, wow, Greg Kreinler. Yeah, that's me. Uh, painter, right? Yeah. All right. Well, looks like you've been dicking around for 15 <laughs> years on this. All right. It's time to go out and get a real job. You're done. <laughs> Your time is done. Yeah. Except you've got a long, long list of commissions. So I, I think they're going to, they're going to keep you busy for, for quite some time. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I he's hope. been featured in like the Norman Rockwell Museum and the Yogi Berra Museum. And it, wasn't there something going on in the Baseball Hall of Fame? Like, do I, I feel like I. Yeah, it was, uh, it was actually just them acquiring uh, a painting, uh, I think, early last year. So, oh, you know, that's it. Just, just a painting. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it sounds glamorous, but it's not. I mean, they, there was interest in them getting the painting, mm -hmm. but in actuality, I mean, you can kind of donate stuff to them and you can be in their collection. It's not that hard, but. Uh, that's okay. That's, that's, that's fine. okay. <laughs> fine. That's really good. Well, you know, the, the, the goal, I'd say, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago mm -hmm. was to make a painting that uh, hopefully the Hall of Fame would want so much that they would actually pay for it because they they don't accept uh, any or they only accept donations they don't they don't pay for any of their artifacts so somehow I was like all right I'm gonna make this happen but then I realized no but it's just it doesn't work that way so we'll, we'll climb the sky just because it's not actually a thing right <laughs> exactly <laughs> it was, it was, not because you're not good enough but just no because well they don't do that <laughs> I mean, in my head, I'm not good enough, though, so. Yeah, but again, that's the neuroses, the Jewish neuroses. There's not much we can do about that. We'll, that's true. We'll move on from so, um, okay. So we, we've got, and and listen, I'm going to, in the blog and probably in this uh, podcast, I'm, I'm going to um, put up your website probably many times because, first of all, it's a beautiful, simple website. Oh, and it you. actually has a gal, like a, a full gallery of a lot of the portraits that he's made and the the opening one is is this like unbelievable um, capture of Lou Gehrig. I think it was on the the day that he announced his retirement, right? Yeah, yeah, the, his speech. Um, yeah, yeah, and and it's 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 like massive. It's just this enormous picture, and that's like the main um, the main home screen on his. Uh, and he and he painted it, and he paints it like <laughs> not just once. He like paints it several times. It's like somebody wants it, he paints it. Boom, done. <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's do, let's start this, this reflection. Okay. Okay. Let's do this, it. This process of reflection. So using your current adult brain, your 42 year old American painter brain. <laughs> that hurts, Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> um, describe your adolescent self. Uh, well, I was, um, you know, short and hairy um same um probably <laughs> you're probably looking for not physical traits uh, looking back i i i don't know i mean i i was i was a little weird i i, I find this sounds really cliche or or lame but i i have a hard time kind of putting myself into a box um because I feel like I was a very shy person, but at the same time, I was pretty gregarious and I, I loved being around people. I loved being around friends. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I was around, uh, uh, you know, maybe if I was around a girl or something like that, who I was attracted to, then yeah, maybe that's when the shyness really kind of came out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I could be moody at times, uh, kind of, um, I don't know, brooding, but at the same time, you know, really cynical and 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 kind of carefree. I, mm -hmm. They're all kind of these weird, you know, dichotomies that I feel like I just kind of had inside. 
Uh, but yeah, I was, I was very set in my ways. Uh, my life was kind of ruled by uh, mentally, like my, my obsessions. Mm -hmm. So whatever it was that I was feeling, whatever it was that I was going through that was kind of affecting, uh, affecting me kind of mentally, like that was going on 100% of the time mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, churning and churning and churning like in a, like in a washing machine. And it was just kind of like this obsessive train that I could never really stop. Mm. Uh, something that kind of continues today, but um, I, I've been able to kind of channel that in other ways. I mean, I, I think that's I think that's kind of me. I think in adolescence, like like those are the seeds of who you are, and it and you know you either learn to cope and and strategize the stuff that's like really really tough or you sort of create like maladaptive behaviors that carry into your adulthood. Right, right. Um, and, and, you know, so, so part of uh, the reason that I wanted to do this as a, as a teacher um, who's seen a lot of adolescence in her life is to kind of highlight, you know, the stuff that you're feeling now as an adolescent um, that, you know, it, it's who you are and, and it, it can grow and it can change as an adult, but adults today are still dealing with their adolescent selves, it's just, uh, you have more responsibilities and you don't have as much time to ruminate about it, but yeah, it's kind of all still there. Yeah, it is. I mean, and even with, uh, you know, even with therapy, I mean, you know, I'm not ashamed to yeah. say that I, I have, have had tons of therapy. It's just, it's a part of you, you know, there are these younger parts of you that, that still feel whatever it was that you felt, you know, even in, in elementary school, middle school, high school, you know, even going past college, it's like, it, it's just all a part of you. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to think that now that I am 42 and approaching my elder years, that <laughs> I've got like a little bit more of a handle on it. And I, I can kind of, um, I don't know, live uh, a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. And I say that, you know, <laughs> that sounds really dramatic because obviously, you know, I, I had a great childhood and a great life. I mean, I have two loving parents who, thank God, are still around and great relationship with my brother and my family and my friends. And uh, I'm relatively healthy, but, you know, also we're all kind of screwed up in the head in some way. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Oh, so Greg was never one of my dance students, right? He never had me for a dance class or like Thank in a family class. All of our interaction was through the Thespian experience, the rehearsals, particularly towards the end of the rehearsal process when I would come in, bring the cast and we would put everything up on the stage. And then, you know, Greg and the tech crew would like sort of, we would integrate everything. And, and that's, you know, when I had my learning process, you know, with Greg. So like looking at, at sort of those moments and thespians in general, even when I wasn't there, just like kind of being in and around the environment, what was something or things uh, or situations that happened that helped you to manage or to regulate your adolescent self? It's virtually, it's virtually impossible for me to kind of separate thespians and the experience with thespians from my adolescent self. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like my my sense of uh, of a social life and a uh, sense of kind of acceptance, uh, escapism, even uh, you know, and I though you know though I was part of of crew and everything, and I was in the lighting booth, and I wasn't it wasn't necessarily something I was interested in for uh, vocational purposes, but. Uh, working together with you and the actors and actresses and, and the crew, you know, on a common goal of producing something, producing art, producing something that you're proud of, that, that was kind of very appealing to me. Uh, I mean, I, I still, you know, to this day, I, I look back on, on all of those memories and, and all of those friends with such fondness, uh, even even those who I don't necessarily speak to uh, much or at all, I feel like there's kind of a, there's just kind of a, a bond, or, <laughs> or at least I'd like to think that there's a bond that that yeah. we have together. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I think, you know, without thespians, I, I can't even imagine what my, what my life would have been like, um, you know, my, my sense of self, uh, my, my sense of confidence in myself, uh, my sense of adventure, I mean, all that, it, it's just so intertwined with, with that experience. That's partially why those memories are still so vivid uh, to me because they were so important. And, you know, I, I remember, I still remember going, you know, for basically the first, uh, it wasn't even a thespians meeting. It was just kind of a play meeting mm -hmm. uh, that, that Gavin Miranda, he didn't even drag me to, but it was because of him that I went. Because right. um, Gavin, Gavin's two years older than me and at the time he was a senior and I was a sophomore. So this is 96. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he was a part of play. He was in shows and he had all these friends and it was kind of like, oh, well, you know, I'm really, I'm close with Gavin and I would love to, you know, be in this position where I can meet some of his friends. So I'm meeting kind of like older people and, and getting to know them and, and, and developing relationships with them. And that's kind of what I thought the play experience would be like and it was but i mean that was where you know i met you and you were still stacy roth i was um, not much longer but it you was were like still a, it was like a roth. year it was like the first year yeah and then i yeah. came back for the for the next musical and roth was no longer a thing it was tear that's right <laughs> yeah it, it's weird married. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. I, I I mentioned uh, I mentioned to my wife today that the uh, that I was doing a podcast with you, and I said oh, I'm doing a podcast with Stacy, and she's like, Stacy Roth, and I was like, you mean Stacy Tiro? <laughs> I guess you know she knows you from like Facebook, where you have the Stacy Roth Tiro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, it was interesting hearing her, uh, uh, you know, reference you by your uh, your maiden name. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> but you know, looking back on that. I was 16, you know, Gavin was 18. You were what, 24? Yeah, in my, my first show, I, cause it was before I got married and I, and I actually, I turned 25, right? Like on our honeymoon and we got oh, married yeah. in 96. So like my first musical was the spring of 1995 and that was Bye Bye Birdie. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, and it's funny cause I've been interviewing all these kids from like, you know, 2015, 2010, 2009. And now I'm like, and now we're back in the 1900s. <laughs> like, oh my yeah. God, I was that young. Ah. I mean, you're you only, are. you're only like that. That's the weird thing about the whole experience is that when I came in, I was like only seven or eight years older than you guys. Yeah. And, um, you know, now I'm like, I'm like this, this old bitty, but, but then I was like this, I was this kid. I was like this young kid trying to figure out who I was and what I was going to be because I was sort of taking a sharp left turn away from like my acting career. My I was going to be an actress, musical right. theater, and you know I got this this high school you know direction and choreo chore uh, choreography gig, and I was like, oh okay, this will this will pay a couple of bills, I guess. Sure, no right. problem. Right. And like, it kept pulling me back in. <laughs> Iris it's is like, you're not going anywhere. That's right. <laughs> it's like, I can't do this by myself anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I need, yeah, 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 I need yeah. someone else. Yeah. Well, you, you took on, I, I never met them, but I know that the, uh, the ones uh, who I guess you replaced, it was mm -hmm. actually two people. Yeah. So you took on the job of two people there as a 24 year old. So yeah. kudos to you. <laughs> Still doing it. You know, I think I've taken I on a couple of other people on, along the way. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, even like when we, when we get together and we hang out and, uh, you know, if we see like Amanda, you know, I, I've known Amanda since, um, I think since middle school. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, no matter how, no matter how old she is or what she's doing, I mean, she looks exactly the same because you, you two are both freaks of nature, but <laughs> It, she's always that you know like like the hot girl in high school who you know is the lead in Pippin who had this beautiful voice and it, that's just what kind of you know she's always going to be to me just like everyone else in Thespians is always that person whoever yeah. they were then that's who they are forever yeah and and that's another interesting thing about doing this podcast is that 
so a lot of the kids that I saw in high school, you know, they were anywhere from, you know, seven to like 10 years to many more than that, you know, older, but like in my head, I'm remembering that kid who, who, you know, was in the lighting booth or who sung that song or, you know, who did this thing. And, and now they're like these growing mostly or very successful adults. And I'm like, right. it's like, oh, the reality sets in that, you know, time does just kind of keep marching on. It doesn't. Yeah. Stop. And we just, yeah. <laughs> what, I mean, what is that like for you where, you know, you, you know, you, you, you obviously you have a minus COVID, you have your kind of routine, you have mm -hmm. your curriculum that you're following, you have, you know, your, your play schedule and how you work that out. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, every year you get a little older and wiser and more comfortable with what you're doing, but it's like the kids are still kind of staying the same age for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, that's probably another long conversation, but, um, I, I am, I'm, I'm tired, <laughs> I'm definitely tired, <laughs> but the, the wise, the wise part of it is I've seen so many things so many times that I almost like anticipate what, what's coming. And I wind up nipping things in the bud, like before they even happen or before they oh, have a okay. chance to happen. Okay. Um, you know, like they make a face and I know what they're thinking and I know what they're about to say. I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't have time for that. Move on. Let's just keep going. You trust me. You're good. I promise me. I promise you're good. And, um, so I, I feel like when you allow a kid to stop themselves in their tracks, it, it they just dig in. Whereas yeah. if they start to have the thought uh, and you're like, no, 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 can you just keep moving along, moving along, keep you going, you know, distraction. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, it, it really helps get them out of their heads. And, um, and, and then my position has always been about make them believe what you know to be true. Like make okay. them believe that they are, that they can do this, even though they have never seen this before. And they have, they think you're crazy and, and all of that. Um, it's my job to make them believe it, that they're way better than they than they ever could believe that they are. So it's exhausting. Yeah. I need summer vacation. Uh, well, yeah, all, all <laughs> teachers do. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do. And there's a reason for it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, yeah. And, you know, getting, getting older, I, I, I'm amazed at, at <sighs> some things do kind of clear up in your head. I, I remember when I was uh, getting my master's and I, you know, I was thinking about being an art teacher and I went back to Spring Valley to kind of do some observational stuff and I was observing Hooper mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there in the class and I'm just kind of, I'm not necessarily paying attention to the students, I'm paying attention to him mm -hmm. and everything he's talking about, you know, content wise, I'm like, holy crap, is he the greatest teacher in the universe? He's breaking this down. I understand it. I'm going with the flow. I'm learning. Um, Yes, sure, maybe, but also I'm not, you know, 15 or 16 with raging hormones and, you know, all this other crap going on in my head. Uh, yeah, adults have, I don't know why, but adults sort of have more of a vested interest in learning yeah. than kids do in the beginning. Kids are so distracted by their own stuff. Teenagers are just like completely narcissistic. It's just, it's who they am. They are, it's where their brains are. Um, they don't really have a choice, but to be that, that's just their developmental phase. Uh, you know, adults are kind of like, what else is going on in the world? And the kids are just like, ah, you know, so uh -huh. yeah, we're going to move to question number four. Okay. What are some lessons that you learned in your thespian experience that you think about or use today? That's a great question. Um, I say that they're probably two things that I that I really kind of have held on to since then. The sense of of camaraderie that that thespians kind of provided, the you know, the opportunity to to meet other people, uh, people who are different from yourself, people who are, you know, who run in, in different cliques, who are into different things you know, different ethnicities, different cultures, different sex, you know, whatever. 
it, that... it made me feel less alone uh, in that you could develop relationships with people and, you know, that we're all kind of weird in our own way. Uh, and, you know, still, I think I still put great stock in that. I, you know, I, I like the fact that, you know, you can have a, a that we have a very diverse group of friends, you know, of, of all walks of life. And, you know, I'm kind of always eager to learn more and kind of put myself in, in those people's shoes. And it makes me feel, you know, less alone. And that, that helps. You know, I'm able to kind of talk to you about these times that, that we had had together uh, almost 25 years ago. Holy shit. Uh, almost 25 years ago. And as vivid as they are and as, as, uh, it's like the way the way I remember them. I, I can I can remember, you know, what what people were wearing. You know, what people said. You know, what was going on in their lives. What was going on in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, what the weather was like on some of these days. Like all these weird inane details. That's that's kind of carried its way into the kind of work that I do now, mm -hmm. uh, because when I paint these kind of historical baseball scenes. It, it's very important for me to, uh, you know, obviously be, be accurate in whatever it is I'm depicting, mm -hmm. but uh, to try and kind of recreate the moments. Uh, so I get kind of boggled down in like these small details that each individual piece should have, you know. So if it's a, you know, a painting of, uh, you know, of a ball player from uh, from the early 1900s, and you know, let's say you see a crowd in the background, you know what. Uh, what is this crowd going to look like? I mean, what kind of clothes should they be wearing? Uh, you know, if there are women in the crowd, where are they sitting? You know, is there a designated spot in the ballpark where usually they would congregate? Uh, what kind of color, uh, colors and patterns were being used at the time? You know, how does, how does sunlight affect, you know, the look of those colors on a particular day or whatever? It's, it's just all like this weird pile of minutiae that that you know when you put it together and or at least the hope is that when you put it together it kind of creates something meaningful and it kind of creates a sense of nostalgia and and it puts the person back into you know maybe an experience that they had with with their mom or dad or something at a, at a ballpark i don't know i don't know so much if if thespians taught me to do that as much as they did uh, teaching me kind of the importance of that stuff, like as it is important to me. Um, it made it, it okay for that to be important, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of made me realize that that, you know, that's kind of how I process things. That's how I, I process, you know, my, my world and, 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 you know, whatever stimuli are going on around me. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, still to this day, it, I, I'm still the same way, you know, where I, my memories are all kind of very multifaceted in, in that regard. So, well, and, and, you know, with, with, when you're creating a, a, a theater piece, you know, even high school theater, there, there are so many details that I think, I think there are, I think a lot of, a lot of teenagers are not really detail oriented. Um, I think they, you know, like they just see what they see in, in many cases um and so to have somebody who is so interested in the details who does ask questions who's like wondering these things that's a boon like that's a real gift to a high school teacher especially of you know of the arts that there's there's somebody who actually cares and challenges you right to make sure that you're still, that you're thinking in that way. Cause you know, sometimes, sometimes and I, I don't want to say you have to dumb it down, but sometimes you have to simplify things. You don't want to get as, um, as crazy and abstract as your brain wants to go because that's what adult brains do. Right. And we <laughs> I got to like, you know, sort of pull it back, pull it back, pull it back and make and chunk it so that, you know, the adolescent brain can conceptualize it and internalize it and then produce something out of it. So um, I, I'm, I guess that experience 
because you noticed everything, because you internalized, you know, everything, maybe that just gave a little bit of validation and, and like said, yeah, okay, this is, this is how your brain works this way. And it works for us too. So great. Yeah. I think also being with, with creative people in that sort of setting also really helped. I mean, you know, like I, like I had mentioned, I wasn't necessarily, you know, I wasn't thinking of, of pursuing a career in, in theater or anything like that, but, but, you know, learning how to paint a mural, uh, you know, that you needed as a backdrop, um, you know, learning how to uh, change a Fresnel bowl, a bulb or whatever, and, and, you know, going up on the catwalk and, and, you know, fighting a fear of heights. And <laughs> I don't know, I, I think that when, when you're around people who kind of take you out of your comfort zone like that, and at the same time are on like the same kind of level as you, you know, when you think the same way that they think. The it, same page. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even now, you know, I, I have friends, you know, who I love dearly and, and I, you know, hang out with them or whatever, or at least I used to before I had kids, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you hang out with them and you have a good time or whatever, but they're very different from artist friends because, you know, you can, it's like talking shop with someone, uh, you know, talking about, you know, the, the tinting strength of a particular oil color or brand, you know, over this other one, or, you know, uh, whatever issues they're having in the freelance world. And it's like, you're speaking a language to them that your other group doesn't really understand. Right. Um, I think learning that that can be a thing and that's, that's okay that that's a thing. I think that that was really important for me. And I think, I think thespians did have a lot to do with that. Yay. <laughs> Making good adults, children to adults. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, so how do you think that you've, you've changed since high school? I'm Other than you're short. older. Yeah, I'm still short and hairy and a little <laughs> bit grayer. Uh, I'd like to think that I'm still pretty idealistic about things, um, you know, whether it's the world in general or, or my career or my relationships. Um, but I think, I don't know, I think that idealism it doesn't traverse the fantasy realm, so I don't get caught up in, in you know, what, what I feel like these things should be, you know, whether it's, it's like washed in realism. Yeah. Yeah. I want it to be here, but I, I know that we're somewhere around here. Yeah. yeah. And, but, but maybe, I don't know, maybe that makes me more cynical. I don't know. Um, I, I feel like that's kind of the main difference. Um, because at the same time, I feel like I'm, you know, like I said, I still feel like I'm that 15 year old kid who is, you know, scared to talk to girls, but clearly I did something right because I'm married. So I don't know. <laughs> and you're still married. even when And I'm still married. married. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe it's just kind of my, my, my world outlook that, that has changed a bit. Um, and maybe I've matured in that way. <laughs> so so taking this adult self this idealistic realist boarding on cynic <laughs> uh, what would your adult self tell your high school self now to like help ease the way help smooth things out oh, man what would, tell <laughs> what would i tell my high school self what would you tell little greg there are a couple of things I'd say. I think I would I would definitely tell myself to uh, to have hope mm -hmm. and and to assure myself that I'll be okay. It's not necessarily speaking of like a specific experience, just yeah. kind of in general. Yeah, you're gonna be okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I you know I, I think that would help. I mean, I was. I was kind of a, I don't know, I wouldn't say I was a ball of nerves, but I, I was just, it was doom and gloom. Would you call yourself more neurotic then or now? It, I mean, they're different in that I, I feel like I'm more, I feel like I'm more neurotic now. Uh, and I think I'm more neurotic because I think the world is caters more to those neuroses mm -hmm. in that, you know, when, 
when I was 15 or 16 or whatever, there was America Online. And exactly. I mean, yeah, the, the internet was not what it was today. You know, there was no social media. Uh, there was a lot less uh, political correctness. Uh, back in high school, you know, I'm obviously incredibly neurotic, but I was still kind of in my box. You know, I was in within the walls of Spring Valley High School and the walls of, of my house. Uh, that's kind of where it started and where it ended. Mm -hmm. And here, you know, here like in Brooklyn or whatever, you know, I have the whole world and and I have the internet and and I'm you know, I'm making art that is kind of affecting, like really affecting people and people that are paying money for it, which is, you know, boggles my mind. Mm -hmm. But a lot of money, by the way. Well, <laughs> sometimes, but I really think because of, you know, my, my heritage or whatever, I'm just, I'm going to be neurotic no matter what. <laughs> um, right. I would like to tell myself <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, <laughs> to consider uh, trying medication <laughs> <laughs> sooner. Um, I mean, often. I, I sometimes wonder what my high school life would have been like if I wasn't kind of constantly living in my obsessions. Um, yeah. Not to say that I didn't enjoy high school because I loved it and I you know, I still look back on it with so much fondness. Uh, but uh, I'm curious what trying meds would have done for me. Um, I mean, you know, from like a career, like selfish standpoint, I'd probably say, you know, try oil painting earlier. Mm -hmm. Because then I'd probably if I started earlier, I'd probably be a better painter now. Um, I don't know how that's possible. But okay. Uh, no, no, no. That very, it's very possible. It's I'm, I'm forever kind of like climbing the mountain and, you know, knowing that you're never going to reach the summit, it kind of just sure. gets higher, whatever. Oh, sure. Um, I get that. I get that. Yeah. I, I, but I also, I kind of wonder if, would I tell myself to kind of let loose a little bit more, uh, to relinquish a little bit of your control and to kind of maybe go where your fears are mm -hmm. when I was in school, I didn't, you know, I didn't smoke or drink or do any illicit activity. Or vape. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, God, that's a thing, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing existed like that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't do any of that. And I still don't. Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, I think that might also be why I have such a clear memory of this stuff. I mean, especially if you're talking like after after the shows like the cast parties and the crew parties oh yeah i'm, al I'm always designated driver sure. so you know i always remember who's throwing up or who's crying over who else or whatever i you know and you know i'm i'm just like sitting in my car you know watching these people kind of like fall apart and and i'm kind of like well you know i mean i'm glad i don't do that but at the same time it's not a bad thing yeah you, you let loose you kept you kept, yeah, but in that regard, and I remember some of those, and I, I was young then, so I would go to some of those cast parties as like the, you know, the adult in the room. And, and right. I was, because I never really did much of that either. And, um, and I would like see a lot of stuff. I'm like, I, I, I can't be here. I, I shouldn't, I'm not, I'm going to go home now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be here now. <laughs> I'm well, the adult in the room. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that. And I am gone. So, <laughs> but it, it's interesting because, you know, you were, you were so young, you could still be, you know, one of, one of us, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you liked it or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there were those times that you would come with us to, you know, like the Nanuet diner after mm -hmm. one of the shows or whatever. And, you know, people would be playing the sugar game or whatever and you're the only adult there you know looking back on it <laughs> thinking wow you know stacy's 24 25 years old at the time and she has like this you know this motley crew of of teenagers kind of know. you know under her wing and like probably you know she feels somewhat responsible for them but at the same time you know she wants to kind of have fun and 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 get to know us i guess on yeah. on that level and 
kind of because it wasn't I, it wasn't very far from you know like I went to college and and I went I was in a theater program so like that like going to the diner you know after a show or after rehearsals like that was like the thing to do so to me that was the the natural course of events was you do your show oh okay diner let's get a bite to eat and blow off some steam and just kind of like let go uh and and at some point i was probably in my my 30s when i was like i can't do this anymore (laughs) (laughs) i gotta go to bed (laughs) you got you you have fun don't go don't stay out too late because you got a show tomorrow and you got to be in school tomorrow morning you know um it just it got you know enough but your i mean your responsibilities changed i mean you you had kids and, and your 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 career and other concerns whereas the kids are just kind of like well you know maybe i'll be hung over for tomorrow's show i guess or whatever yeah which is not I, very professional it's not very professional <laughs> and and i was like I, you know i had to i had to bust some heads yeah stop being a dope you know I, <laughs> I remember, I remember some of those talks. I, yeah. I do. <laughs> I've, I've given a lot of those in my career. I'm it's sure. Fun. It's fun. You know, something comes at me. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> really? I got to do this again? Uh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, the teenagers are going to be teenagers anyway. Um, always. They are always going to be teenagers. I just don't have the patience for any of that nonsense. So I'm like, listen, I'll, I'll be on your side, but you mess up like that we're done. <laughs> we're done. I don't have yeah. the energy. I, but, but mm. that being said, I remember something very specific mm-hmm. that you did. You were, it was for the worst high school play mm-hmm. uh, in the world, which for those of you who are watching, listening or whatever, was literally the greatest <laughs> performance <laughs> greatest show that I've ever been a part of I haven't enjoyed anything uh, as much in that realm since it was super fun uh, oh so good uh, there was a kid or a teenager uh, I probably shouldn't name him uh, mm. but he uh, he did not show up to mm. practice a lot or he would show up late uh, and you know he didn't necessarily have a significant part uh, from what I remember, but at some point, I'm pretty sure that's for this show. I could be wrong, but at some point, you said, "All right, well, you're out. We need to get someone else. Mm-hmm. You didn't put up with this crap." Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, you were young then, and and you know, you stood your ground. So good for you, because I, you know, I would have probably let those kids walk all over me <laughs> that's probably another whole conversation you know especially nowadays with with all the mental health issues that are like uh, you know sort of blowing up and you kind of have to be sensitive to that and stand your ground like both of those things have to happen in the same space right um so it, it actually it got a little trickier as i got older and had kids and you know was dealing with a lot of stuff in within our own house so it's like this oh I have to I have to take a step back and I have to breathe and I have to consider and ask all the questions and you know it's like you have to put the work in with when you're talking about kids because you really don't know where they're actually coming from right you know you don't know what their situation really is so um while I I'm always a fan of bringing down the hammer when it needs to be uh now it's like I'm bringing down the hammer and here's why, and here's why it's better for you. (laughs) So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's great. I, I, I admire that. I personally, that, I mean, that's something that I've kind of always dealt with my, my whole life where I've uh, I'm, I'm very easygoing. And I I think that uh, I think that I can kind of be a a welcome mat for a lot of people. And Mm. uh, I kind of let those things happen when, there are many times that I should kind of stand my ground and uh, and deal with that. But you see, I mean, I'm, I'm it's like I, I've been that way my whole life and I'm 42 and it's like I'm still trying to work on this stuff. So obviously, <laughs> obviously yeah. I'm like the same person. 
So, so that, and this actually dovetails right into the next question, which is what's something that you're, or now many things that you're grappling with now? Certainly the world at large, things that are going on kind of politically, socially, that, that stuff concerns me and affects me more in a way that it never did. Uh, so, you know, some of that stuff is tough. Uh, you know, being, being an artist is, is hard. Uh, you know, as, as you know, as, as a lot of the people who probably are listening to this know, and, you know, as you kind of grow up uh, and mature and continue being an artist, continue being a creative of some kind, you know, the, the definition of that changes. And you find things about, I guess, whatever it is that you're doing that are that are hard that are less desirable than others you know from a job standpoint like i'm i'm super 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 lucky that you know i'm i'm doing something that i love um i know that's really rare i'm you know i'm able to support my family and like that's that's great but you know there's a lot of pressure that comes with that there's pressure that uh that i put on myself you know to be to be a better artist you know, if I go if I go to museums or whatever, and I'm I'm looking at the people who are in museums or sorry their work, you know, I aspire to be where they are. Uh, you know, to be at that level uh, because it's you know they're at the summit and I'm at I'm I'm at base camp, and and you know, the the I guess the the pressure that I put on myself to try to just always improve with each thing that I create, I grapple with that. Mm. Um, you know, being a parent, as you know, is hard. Um, having kids was something that just completely changed my life um, in so many ways, you know, many positives and some negatives, yeah. which I think is normal, uh, trying to navigate that. Um, it's There's it, a lot of, you know, juggling and trying to find balance amongst all of these things that are that are vying for your attention and, and vying for um, your energy. And it's it's not easy. It's definitely not. Um, and you know it's like you, you're, you just do the best that you can one day at a time. Uh, it's kind of like all all we can do is just keep trying our best. Yeah, and it, that's that's hard for someone like me, uh, because, you know, I'm kind of like this perfectionist. And if something's not perfect, then it's just, it's not right. It's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like and that. seeing that in my children, like how they kind of look at things that way, you know, I'm kind of like, holy crap, what have I done to them? <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> you know, realizing that you have to kind of you know, allow for some grace. Um, yep. <laughs> there's so many times, like, you know, when, when we would hang out and, uh, you know, I, I think of, I think of you and Chris and, and the fact that, you know, your daughters are teenagers and I'm like, I don't want teenage kids. <laughs> I <know. laughs> can I, can I, can I do something about that? <laughs> it, it'll, it'll be a while. Um, but, and that, then it'll hit you and it's like a big sock to the nose. Like, <sighs> ah, really? That's it. The little ones are done. There's no more. Yeah. 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 That's, that's hard. Um, yeah. I, you know, again, this kind of, it goes hand in hand with just being neurotic, but you know, my, my mortality or my, not even my mortality, uh, as much as the mortality of my parents and the people I love, uh, you know, my parents are uh, in their mid to late seventies, and uh, you know they're not on they're not on borrowed time, but they're older, and uh, it's like they have grandkids, and you know, I, we keep them around for that. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I'm seeing some of their friends pass on uh, you know my 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 father uh one of his best friends someone he's known since he was 10 or 11 you know growing up in queens uh he you know he passed away a few weeks ago and he's someone who's been a part of my life you know as long as i've been born you know i remember right. i remember him you know <laughs> bringing like his new son to our uh, to our house and you know uh, hanging out with them in, in my older years and, and, 
you know, him being at our bar mitzvahs and all those events. And, and it's like, now they. I know, yeah. I know when, when my mom, my mom went and it, and it was like, oh, uh, I'm parentless now. Wow. Uh, I, like to putting that in, in that, in that framework is, is very shocking. It takes some, some getting used to. And so, you know, it's, it's that full acceptance of you being an adult. Yeah. You know, it's like understanding and absorbing that for real. Um, so, but hopefully that's not going to happen me for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. So, tell me one okay. thing that you miss about your high school self. Okay. And one thing that has gotten better as an adult. That's a great question. Mm. All right something I miss about my high school self mm -hmm. aside from my weight because um, <laughs> that one that one's come up a lot recently oh, yeah. uh, I miss I miss feeling like I have my whole life ahead of me mm. I do miss that um, again you know I'm 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 42 uh, I I know I'm young I, well not to a high school or to a high school or I'm ancient mm -hmm. um, join the club yeah I, yeah but I miss, I miss that because I don't, I don't feel like that anymore. I kind of, I'm a lot more uh, conscious of the fact that I am mortal and someday will not be around. Mm. Moving on. Um, <laughs> one thing that's gotten better. <laughs> one thing that's gotten better. This is going to sound a little weird. I actually, I kind of like the fact that I have more responsibilities uh, and maybe more important responsibilities. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I remember when I first when I first moved to Brooklyn, and I remember the first few times that I was paying rent for myself. Uh, just the idea of like, oh, okay, you know, that's going to rent, and I'm paying for the next month and it's my responsibility to make sure that i you know have that every month that you know first of the month or whatever i kind of like things like that do you uh, think that that a little bit plays into the kind of obsessive piece of your personality yeah yeah i think so i mean you know? because, yeah i mean i don't i don't know if you think this way as as a creative like i'm i'm constantly kind of making lists in my head of things that need to be done and when something gets checked off you know i feel like i've accomplished something you know whether that's fixing a painting somewhere or calling a handyman or paying a bill or whatever i don't know something something about that does feel good um, i know exactly how you feel with that and I almost feel like that's your adolescent self saying, I can do this. I can <laughs> make that phone call and talk Maybe. to that stranger and, yeah. and make them come to my house and fix this thing and then pay them for it and send them on their way. Right. I can do that. There's an autonomy there. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the autonomy frightens the crap out of me still. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's something that, that I do enjoy about that. I mean, obviously I miss being kind of like in the bosom of my parents and their house and not really having to pay for things, but, <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm, I'm a responsible adult now, you know, I have children and I'm, I'm trying to make good decisions by them and my priorities, I guess, are different. Um, and that's kind of cool to me. If, if you could give it. Uh, a piece of sage advice to just high school students now, what would it be? Mm. It's funny because this advice uh, is not necessarily advice that I took. Mm -hmm. uh, Doesn't have to be. I think as a high school kid, I just, I, I think when you're that age, I think trying lots of different stuff and figuring yourself out is super valuable you know there there are times that i wish that you know i did different things in high school like i'd mentioned you know even even if it's just like smoking or drinking or something like that actually maybe not smoking but uh um Who needs that yeah <laughs> but yeah just not being like super 
tightly wound and and maybe not taking things too seriously and and maybe kind of realizing that that you know yes you do you should work hard or i feel like you should work hard uh, and it benefits you to work hard uh, and to focus when you need to but i think it's okay to try new things and, it, and it's okay to fail it's okay to flounder it's okay to do all that stuff you know it's kind of all a part of the growing process uh <laughs> you know don't take everything so seriously and and try lots of different things yeah and discover you know discover yourself I, would, I wish they would listen to me when i said that <laughs> yeah, try taking a dance class it's it's okay like really it's okay you, yeah. you're gonna be fine it doesn't define who you are and you're fine you know what i wish like in this situation i wish that I was growing up, or not growing up, I wish that I was in Rockland County now, mm -hmm. or maybe not even now, but Bennett, my my oldest, loves dancing, and he's, you know, he's very, you know, flamboyant and demonstrative and total ham, mm -hmm. and I think if he was of the age, mm -hmm. you know, a high school kid, holy crap, if you if you were there and oh my god bring him on bring him on that would be incredible That's i mean right there uh sarv and i are sitting at dinner eating and, and uh, the kids had finished their their dinner by then and bennett is on the floor drawing in a dress and jonah is sitting at his chair singing do re mi uh -huh. to himself and i you know sarv and i look at each other and i'm like yeah these are our kids that's that tracks they're thespians that's it yeah yeah so i mean right there <laughs> right there it's in the blood yeah oh man <laughs> I, I i wish that you know there was like a weird kind of space-time continuum where they're older and we're in rockland and you're teaching there and you got them and also I'm younger and thinner and yeah. less gray. Less gray, right. Yeah. I know. Well, that would, that would be across the board. Yeah. <laughs> Not high school. We're, we're done with high school. Now you adult Greg, who's with the two kids and the wife and the Brooklyn and an artist and paying bills and responsible, all of that. What are three self-care practices <laughs> that you do I'm, I'm as i'm asking this question i'm like oh god i'm afraid i might know the answer to this but the, the, to to help get you centered get you regulated kind of like fill you back up when you're like ah i've had it i have more than three but i'll, I'll try Good. to bring them on bring them on okay Damn. uh for me uh painting painting cures all uh and it's not it's not because i enjoy painting so much i mean i do enjoy it but it provides me with something i can get lost in and you know again as a creative you know what it's like to get lost in in that muse and you know time and space kind of stop and you're just somewhere else and there's something else going on that you've tapped into you know that's a meditative state that that's bliss that's nice but, that you can go to work and not be stressed yeah yeah I, I mean you know sure i can stress about things here and there but i i can i can also escape in the work which is really important and again you know something that i'm, I'm really lucky uh that i can do mm -hmm. going to the gym helps mm -hmm. i have been lax on that lately uh but you know being active uh feeling like you've done something good for your body uh is very helpful i say that you know as as someone who probably after this call is gonna, you know, devour an entire box of Chips Ahoy, but whatever. I'm 42, I'm an adult, I can make these decisions. <laughs> I'm um, responsible. <laughs> I mentioned it before, I think therapy is great. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we're talking about regulating yourself, I know it's not necessarily something that, you know, you can have on call 24 seven, but uh, being, able to <clears throat> being able to talk to somebody who will listen, who is, you know, completely objective and 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 non-judgmental uh is worth its weight in gold you know breathing you know just coming back to you know a meditative state 
where you're just kind of conscious of, of your breath and, you know, inhaling and exhaling, you can kind of center yourself that way. Uh, that helps sometimes. Um, going outside and uh, putting your phone down is mm. great. Mm. You know, taking in the environment. You know, in Brooklyn, it's sometimes it's a bit loud, crazy. So it, it's not as peaceful as uh, things were in Rockland. But if you can kind of eliminate the phone aspect of it, I think that helps uh, to be one with nature. Yeah, just detach, get, yeah. get out of those vibes to the brain. It's like, no, yeah. cut it off. Yeah, it's such a hard thing to do. And I'm, I'm guilty of it, you know, just like everybody else, especially as a, as a freelancer, you know, it, you could be getting work emails that, you know, need, you need to take care of, or you need to kind of make big decisions on, and you just kind of have to be connected. But uh, being able to put it down and be is, uh, is good, is really important. But uh, yeah, I, I find that more often than not, if I, if I'm kind of going crazy, uh, and if we're not talking about, you know, having a Xanax or something, <laughs> like, just painting and just creating, just getting into the weeds with that. I think that's the most helpful for me. Good. I would have expected that. You're so prolific just by itself. The, the, um, the sheer amount of paintings that you have generated in all of these years it's not like you're doing like one painting a year you must have like 25 different paintings that you're working on like at any given time yeah so you know to <clears throat> be absolutely immersed in that like all the time you it that it has to be otherwise i would imagine that you you'd feel like you're choking in work yeah and and you know that that kind of happened where uh you know where a couple months ago i i kind of put a, a kibosh on, on taking, on taking new work just because I, you know, I had this, this backlog that was crazy and I just kind of needed to stop bleeding, I guess. <laughs> stop well, the bleeding finish and, what, finish what you've got, like yeah. get that done. And, and then, yeah. it, but do, it, yeah. do you feel like you can now be like more selective in the projects that you take on? Theoretically, yes. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also too neurotic to think that I can do that because you know someone someone comes to me and they want a big painting of Babe Ruth well you know I'm a little tired of Babe Ruth I painted him 37,000 times or whatever but you know I don't know if someone's gonna pay me you know the same rate for like a Jorge Posada painting no offense to Jorge but uh it was pretty awesome yeah he was great but uh yeah I find that theoretically i i can kind of be a bit more selective and I, I am doing that there are certain kinds of paintings that that i used to kind of do that i don't want to do anymore uh i guess i've kind of come to the realization that my my time is all i have right and my time i guess is important or it's whatever valuable. It's valuable. Um, it's, it's, listen, it's valuable for a lot of different reasons. It's yeah. valuable because it's what you use to make your money. It's right. valuable because you have a family that you need to spend a little bit of time with, you know, <laughs> give, give some, <laughs> give some, and then you need the time to be able to, you know, take care of yourself and recoup. <clears throat> yeah. So there's just, there are just so many hours in the day. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> I wish that I could get everything done that I want to get done, but I know I never will. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I can and I'm going to, you know, still try to make each painting better than the last, mm -hmm. but um, I'm still kind of dealing with the fact that there is an end and, you know, at some point I, you know, won't be able to paint anymore and it's. Oh, so stop. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Morbid neuroses. We're done with that now. I told you. <laughs> I told you. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's um, painting really, really is something for me. And it's just, it's not, it's not just any kind of painting. I mean, doing the baseball stuff for me is so important, like tapping, <clears throat> tapping into the past, tapping into nostalgia. Uh, is so important to me for whatever reason and it's what makes me happy you know which is 
probably why I was like so excited to talk to you about the past and and you know revisit these memories. Uh, it's like Nirvana for me, I guess. <laughs> oh well, I'm I'm glad that I could help you to achieve a little bit of Nirvana in your life <laughs> right now. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> no, absolutely. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. This was this was so so incredible uh to to kind of go back because that that's like a that's like a whole, literally a whole other lifetime ago for me oh. literally you know <laughs> that was when i was you know just just starting out and just getting my feet wet and and being like knowing what a what a leader is you know what what does it mean to be a leader of of adolescence like i didn't i was like please god don't let me let them eat me alive you know and uh and i you know luckily uh i'm still standing so yay but um i i very very much appreciate my early time there because that that like laid the foundation and that that's the um that's what undergirds you know every everything that i'm doing now that, that that's what like made me stick to it so uh, and thanks for you know sticking with me oh please years later Oh, please. I'm, <laughs> I'm honored to be a part of that. You know, you obviously, not that this, there was ever any doubt, but you are obviously very special to your students and to your friends and the people who love you. So that's, you know, being a part of that is, is pretty awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm glad we were able to reconnect and, yeah. and I'm glad that, you know, Chris is such a geek because I love him for that too. So <laughs> I, they could t the, the two of you could talk way more at length about about so many things I, i'll just i'll go sleep in the corner you guys <laughs> talk your yankee nostalgia and see see who really knows more oh Ready? Right. well go. it's not a competition it's just you know <laughs> it's it's just about living in the past and not having to face what's going on around us right. the present. Okay. well thank you sir greg kreinler oh please thank for, you uh, for being a part of this and Tune in next week for episode 14 of Change for the Better, The Power of Arts in Education. <laughs>